the Mises Institute has a new free book for Minor Issues fans. Dr. Guido Holzman's How Inflation Destroys Civilization. Learn how inflation isn't only making us poor, it's harming our culture, mental well-being, and the moral foundations of civilization itself. Get your free copy today at Mises.org slash issues free. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. This week, we saw in the stock market what's called a scary downfall in stock prices. This comes right after the inflation report. But surprisingly, it was a rather benign report, a slight uptick in inflation rather than the forecasted downtick in inflation. But nevertheless, stocks retreated quickly. What a change from the old days when the Fed could operate behind the curtain, pulling its levers, dialing up more money supply, adjusting interest rates, and no one cared. And now we're in a situation where everything the Fed does do or doesn't do, and every little statistic for this data-driven Fed means life or death in the stock market. Well, what we've been saying all along is that interest rates set by the Fed are really not all that tight. As a matter of fact, in some respects, the Fed has been too loose to counter inflation. And we mentioned the reverse repo market as a tricky situation. But the Fed, of course, doesn't want to break the banks. They don't want to destroy the treasury market and they don't want to crush the commercial real estate market. So they're playing rather loose rather than overly tight. Inflation in terms of increased prices is not dead yet. The good prices have fallen, but others have continued to increase or stay the same. And this is with a relatively tame energy market and commodity prices. The financial situation that the Fed is looking at is almost dire. Banks across the board are basically underwater with respect to the value of their assets. The Fed itself is losing money at a fairly rapid pace, and the Treasury is bleeding red ink all over the economy. Of course, housing is a mess due to government intervention and Fed policy, and the commercial real estate market is a disaster in waiting. None of these things have been fixed. None of these things are going away. And indeed, none of these things have really even been addressed by policymakers. Meanwhile, in the real economy for real Americans, the net savings as a percentage of gross national product has been negative. It's been declining since 2019 to the first quarter of 2023. It continues in a long-run decline ever since we went off the gold standard in 1971. That's not a good thing. The yield curve is also inverted. Nobody's talking about it anymore, but it sure looks scary. Not for just a recession, but for something much worse. When I look at the twos versus the tens, or the tens versus the 90-day treasury bills, we see a long and deep inversion of the yield curve, which typically forecasts a recession with just a dip into negative territory. The job market, which is highly touted in the mainstream press and by politicians, looks terrible. There's been an increase in part-time jobs, which are typically low-pay jobs, few hours, and no benefits. The number of full-time jobs with benefits has been declining. Temporary jobs, which can be a sign of economic vibrancy and change, have been on the decline. Meanwhile, government jobs, which represent economic waste that simply pads GDP figures, is on the rise. Uber drivers, not exactly a great sign of a great economy, although it's a great service. The number of people driving Uber is up 30%. Meanwhile, jobs in the tech sector and the finance sector are down. Job openings, which was always highly touted for many years, has actually been on the decline now for two years running. Meanwhile, credit card rates 
have increased from 15% to 22%. Credit card balances since the fourth quarter of 2019, the last regular period, was $760 billion. In the third quarter of 2023, the national total was $864 billion and counting. Delinquency rates on credit cards are rising sharply, even though they're still in the normal long run range, and charge-offs by banks for bad credit card debt are also rising sharply, even though they're still in the normal long run range. Instead of keeping our eye only on the Fed and only listening to the Fed, perhaps we need to look outside the curtain at the real economy and see what the situation actually is. And when we look at real markets, labor markets, financial markets, what we see is some very troubling evidence of an economy in trouble.